So, I have reviewed some Jean Pateau fragrances before, uh, mainly Joy, which is the most famous one, uh, and also another one called Sublime, which is one of my personal favorites. But I have not yet reviewed a, another type of Jean Pateau fragrance, which is called 1000. And I have a sample, which is quite shiny. Here, to the inside, with the description and the bottle. And the back. So, the thing about this fragrance, which is an Eau de Parfum, uh, it originally came out in 1972. It's made in France, of course, uh, and it was actually reformulated in the 2000s. And I believe I have the reformulated version. It's, this is certainly not a, a vintage sample. And it is quite different from, definitely different from Sublime. It has some similarities to Joy, uh, but it it's, this is kind of its own creature, 1000. So, let's see, get the sample. You can see it up close, 1000. Supposedly, it's called 1000 because uh, the perfume master, the nose behind the fragrance, had to experiment and reformulate this fragrance 1000 times before they finally got it right. So, kind of uh, an art form, I suppose, trying to get this fragrance right. So, unfortunately, it doesn't have a spray design, so I'll have to yank it off. So, it has a nice little uh, dabbing stick. And... Right off the bat, it, it, it might surprise you smelling it for the first time, because it is quite strong. And not just strong, but also almost... It has a ruggedness to it. So, I'll put it on my wrist here. So, interesting. Uh, it It's a bit sweeter when you put it on the skin uh, versus just smelling it out of the bottle. Because when you smell it out of the bottle, there's no sweetness at all. But on the skin, there's a, a, a whisper of, of sweetness. Definitely not too sweet, but... So the top notes are ozymanthus, violet, and apricot. So, as I mentioned before, this fragrance has been reformulated since the 70s. In the 70s, that was a, a time period when uh, very musky and woodsy perfumes were popular. Today, very sweet and fruity perfumes are popular. And that's notable because the difference between the 1972 version and the more modern 2000s version is the addition of apricot. The original, I believe, did not have any apricot notes, uh, and also there were way more notes, originally. The modern list is far more restrained, there's not as many notes. But the top notes, I wouldn't say it's too fruity at all, really, I would say the violet is prominent, and violet, violet was a a note that was originally in the 1972 version. And the thing about the floral notes, the, the violet and the osmanthus, is that they're very subtle. They're not uh, too sweet and not too in your face. It's like almost reminiscent of dried flowers, you know, maybe a bundle of dried violets that you kind of left in a in a in an oaken drawer for a long time. That's kind of a, a more musky floral rather than a, a fresh and sweet floral. The middle notes are rose, jasmine, geranium, and lily of the valley. So more floral notes mainly and Again, it's more of a dried flower rather than a kind of fresh, plump flower. For that reason, this is more of an earthy kind of fragrance. Uh, not like... Not necessarily you're out in a spring field of flowers. Like I said, this is more of a toned down floral kind of profile. 
And you can see that also with the base notes, which are sandalwood, patchouli, and oak. So these kind of subtle floral notes are grounded by these wood notes. I don't think they use sandalwood, real sandalwood anymore for many perfumes because it's such a rare uh, wood these days and very, you know, expensive to obtain. But the wood notes are definitely prominent even kind of right away. Y you don't have to wait for them to kick in, they're just kind of there. And so there is some controversy about this fragrance because it's it's not uh, a fragrance that's readily accepted today because like I said today people kind of prefer perfumes that are more refreshing, more clean, uh, and light. But this is more of a, a fragrance that has a history. It has, you know, from the straight out of the 70s, from that time when musky fragrances were uh, in vogue. And you could, I mean, even though it has been reformulated recently, you could still tell it's from that era. And There is the kind of similarity to Joy is is that musky note, although I would argue that 1000 is far more musky compared to Joy. Even though Joy becomes more musky as you wear it, 1000 is more musky right away. So that's kind of the big difference. Besides that, uh, the floral notes the floral notes are very faint and they became, become fainter as uh, you wear this perfume. And there is hardly any sweetness. It's mainly any sweetness kind of comes from, interestingly, the woody notes have kind of a weird type of very warm I wouldn't even call it sweetness, but it has a slight bit of lightness or like syrupiness, like the sap of the tree kind of thing. But other than that, there's certainly no, no artificial sweetness, no sugariness. Uh, it is not smoky. I wouldn't consider it smoky. Lots of wood. That That's kind of the main thing that you get out of this mixed with the, uh, I just, I guess the patchouli and just kind of a natural muskiness. The original would have even been even stronger, even more intense, because it had notes of civet, amber, vetiver, oak moss, all that stuff kind of blended in. It also had other notes like bergamot, tarragon, eucalyptus, stuff like that. The reformulated version from the 2000s is missing a lot of those notes, which I think makes it a bit plainer, maybe not as complex and interesting as the original uh, 70s version, uh, because, you know, the base notes are missing that civet note, they're missing the oak moss and the amber. Uh, it's mainly just w woody notes. So, the modern version is kind of stripped down. I don't know what the vintage uh, version smells like, I imagine it would be quite interesting and quite strong to smell. But from what I can tell from the, the modern formulation, it is, it is definitely that kind of sandalwood, oak, very fresh actually, not fresh as in light, but fresh as in you can imagine chopping down an oak tree and putting your nose into that fresh wood pulp. And that kind of oakiness is what you get from this perfume, uh, which is unique just in general. You don't often get that in perfumes. And besides that, the longevity, uh, mainly because it is an eau de parfum, is generally gonna last pretty long, probably around seven to eight hours. And you have to be careful with the silage because the silage, you could definitely, like if you put too much on, it would really just fill up a room and it could kind of p compound on itself and kind of become too strong if you're not too careful. But if you are careful and you use this in sparing amounts, because 
the, the musky notes can get way too out of hand if you put too much on. But with the right amount, this could, this is a very uh, kind of elegant perfume. It's also kind of an edgy perfume, especially by today's perfume standards, kind of the obsession with clean notes and clean perfumes. This is definitely more rugged, kind of, not quite animalistic, but almost. So for that reason, it's definitely not for everyone. It's kind of like Joy's more hardcore cousin. You know, I would, I would say this is just kind of a, a harder fragrance. And, but it does have those gentle floral notes, so, you know, it has a soft side. But other than that, that's pretty much my whole take on 1000 by Jean Pateau. And if it really did take 1000 formulations to get it right, I have to applaud the perfume master for having the dedication that that would require. Other than that, that's pretty much uh, what I have to say about this perfume. Uh, if you have any comments or opinions on this particular perfume, you can leave a comment down below, uh, like, and maybe subscribe. And I make videos throughout the week, so stick around for those.